and uh, that it is, it is composed of songs that celebrate human love, spousal love, love between man and wife. Uh, this did not go unnoticed. It isn't like um, we could say that in the, in the 1900s I had a, we, you know, people had a much highly, more highly evolved brain and we opened that up and said, wow, that's a lot different than Moses had, you know, commands and things. That's a, that's a bunch of love songs. No, this was known a long time ago. Um, and it was, and um, it was famously debated by, by the rabbis, the, 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 the Jews, in terms of what, you know, what books belong in the, in the Testament of the Jews that we call the Old Testament. And, um, and it was brought up in a, in, in, a, in a famous gathering of rabbis where someone said, this is just songs. This is songs about human love, married love. It doesn't really mention God. And, and the idea is that this doesn't show us how to be a good Jew. It doesn't show us how to keep the law of Moses. It doesn't talk about how a Jew should carry himself in a, in a world filled with Gentiles. It doesn't talk of the hope of the prophets or the, or the admonitions to people to stick close and be trusting toward God. These are songs. And, uh, and they fell. This is, this is a purely, almost a secular book, and, it, and it, you, why keep it with the Holy Ghost? Um, that is when the answer was given. And, and the first answer is that we need pictures in our minds, images, and ways to handle this, this thing that we call the love of God. Uh, it is not news to you if, if we sang Jesus loves me, this I know, or the Bible tells me so. You would be covering familiar ground. Jesus loves you, God loves you. But what, is, what can we take for a picture of the nature of that love? And we have to take with God many pictures of the nature of that love. God loves me as a father. Yes, indeed he does loves me and, and watches over me and cares for me. He uh, is diligent to make sure that I keep on the right way and that I'm mature. God loves me as a friend. I find him in my, in my darkest and loneliest moments. He is there beside me. And, uh, and he has a way of never abandoning me and letting me know that, that when I am needy, he is there. God loves me as a healer. And I felt his hand upon my life uh, to renew and bring hope and, and seen him visit people in sick beds and make their bodies whole. Um, but the scriptures have always said that God loves us as a lover. The prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 62, 5. He's nearing the end of his book. He's winding up the prophecies that God has given him. It says, as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. Again, and out of scripture is a picture that God also loves us as a lover. And in, as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. Um, it's not too, not, not too much to say it's a mind-blowing picture. That God not only sits on high and, and uh, directs things and is is pleased or cross, as the case may be, if, if people obey him or disobey him, or if they're kind or if they're they're mean. Uh, it's not. It's beyond saying that God creates and has a plan, but that God is passionate over you, and His heart is moved with love for you in the deepest way imaginable. In that way, well, that is different. And so the Bible tells us, as Jesus has used this imagery, as the prophets have, and says, as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. The Song of Songs is a place where that love is expressed. And so the answer to the Jews' question, well, why is this book here? It's among holy books. And an old rabbi stood up to say, well, all the books are holy. And this is the holy of holies of the holy books. Very much like in the temple, or you know, all the all the building of the temple was holy, and then there was a curtained off place where the 
down and they come inside and they said, that is the holiest place. And they just called it the Holy of Holies, meaning holiest place. This book is entitled The Song of Songs, the best song, because it is amongst all the holy books, the holy place. You know, in the holy place in the temple, nothing went on. It wasn't a place where you instructed the children, where you uh, memorized the scriptures, gave your offering, or helped the poor. The holy place in the temple was where you were with God alone. Just you. A quiet place. And so this song, the holy, holy book, in the midst of the holy book, is expressing your love for God. And in it, God speaks in the first person, talking about his love for his people. You have stolen my heart with one glance of your eyes. How delightful is your love, says God to the beloved. We need it not only to hear that God's love for us is as a bridegroom rejoicing over his bride, but here in one book, it allows the lover to speak, standing in the place of the Lord, and speak his love to us. And so that's why we're here. So unfortunately, uh, for you, if, if, you're, if you're very angry at your neighbor today, and we're hoping that I would give you a pep talk about being kind to that neighbor, we're not doing that. And if, you, and if you're very, uh, very uh, distressed because of a job situation, or the wolf is close to the door, uh, God cares deeply about that, but he didn't send the preacher to talk about trusting God in those situations. We have before us a book that is God speaking to us of his love, and the beloved returning that love to God in a statement like, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for his love is better than wine. And now, the only thing I can say is if, if uh, on a Sunday we try to give practical helps and instruction and things to remember, I can only say that to make this journey together as we, we will through life, through your difficulties and mine, and uh, through our sicknesses, through our disappointments, and, and also taking our joys in, in a way that, way that honors God, um, to do the journey right, we need to know the destination. And destined in the destination is a place where we know the love and embrace of God. Here. Now we can go to the next screen and talk about what this one verse brings up, the kiss. Now, this, this verse then, to, to then continue in the picture of God's love for us, the beloved longs for his kiss. Now, um, if, you, if you have a child in your house and you have windows, they will at some point go up to the window and then they will smash their lips against the we're not sure why. I remember doing it too. But you know, if you if you went outside and looked in, first thing you would be saying is, "Where is my camera?" Oh yeah, you know. But the other thing you would you would notice if you took the time is that their lips are entirely conformed to the flatness of the window pane. Um, there are many kinds of kisses, but the church and the Jews before used to point out that the scriptures themselves are a kiss sent from God to us. Let me explain why. If a kiss is where your lips are conformed to the shape of what, a kid, what is kissed, think about the, uh, the activity where your mother would send you to give a deliver a message. Go down two houses, tell Mrs. Babbert, that was who, who was two houses down from me, tell her that I've got some extra apples and she should come get some. <coughs> what she wants. Well, when I have gone and delivered that message and not garbled it and not got lost in the way, I've actually conformed my lips to what my mom wanted said. I've conformed my lips to her words. When we are in the scriptures and we hear the words of God, can we repeat them? When we say them in our hearts, when we say them out loud, our lips are actually conformed to the things that the Lord wants to we are both receiving and giving back his kiss. So when I return to the Gospel of Matthew and I'm in the fifth chapter, and then it even takes the time to say, Jesus opened his mouth and 
he began to teach that. It's very intentional. And he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When I say those words, I'm allowing my mouth to be conformed <coughs> to what God wants people to hear. God spoke it, and then my lips speak it too. We match, and we are one. This business of God giving us his kiss in Scripture is a, is a great risk on God's part, knowing that we will misuse. Or we may say the words and our lives will say something different. That uh, we may say the words and, and, the, and then treat them, oh, lightly, or with disrespect. But God takes a certain risk in bending down to give us this kiss that he gives us in Scripture. And talking of kisses, you know, the same thing happens when you kiss a face. It had been, well, that's exactly what I was asking myself at one time. How long had it been since I had kissed my mother? You see, there was a risk about doing that too. I said a risk in God leaning down to give us his kiss in Scripture, okay? There's a risk in that. I mean, my mom and I had a have always had a good relationship. But you know, you're, you've, you've set things in place as you grow up through life, how much you're ready to give, how much you're ready to be available, how much you will do. I don't know, call it boundaries or call it, you know, whatever. And, and, and also, this uh, relationship had, had developed with some very tiny um, arenas that that I visited, and I smiled, and I talked, but I didn't, you know, no kissing. All right. But then there came a time when Mom is alone, and she's getting elderly, and she's weak, you know, her hands would shake. And uh, then the Holy Spirit just takes a stick and touch her, and he says, you need to kiss her. How long, you know, well, first off, yeah, I know, I was like, you know, you're interfering. I visited my mom, and you know, come on, you know. <laughs> now you need to kiss her. Well, and how long had it been? It had been many, many years, right? I couldn't really remember. Right? When I was a small child, yeah. So you lean in, and you, and you give your mom a kiss. And what does happen? My lips, her skin conform and are in the same shape. This is a intimacy, is it not? It's a risk on my part. I know if I'm going to go around kissing my mom, then she's going to assume that I'm warmer even than what it was, and she might want things. She might want her, you know, me to take over paying the bills or getting the groceries or visit more often. I don't know. But it's a done deal now that my lips will touch her skin. And my lips will be conformed to the shape of her skin. And there will be a kiss, because that is, that is the right thing to do. It's expression of intimacy and expression of risk. And then it goes back, if God desires for us intimacy like that, you know, he does have for us this destination, that we will not only go through the pearly gates, we will not only have a seat in the heavenly choir. It's like maybe a level better than this one. Um, just one <laughs> and, it, and we'll have a place around the throne, but we will also know his embrace. For the Jesus who died upon the cross has risen again, and he has a body, and it is his desire to embrace you, to hold you in his arms. Which is why we, we, we this is, you can go to the last screen, it's a question of intimacy, with God. Uh, the, the pastor that I followed in Bridgeport, Ohio, uh, second, second place I was a full-time pastor, actually the first place I was much of a success at. Um, uh, the pastor retired from there, and, and the Presbyterian minister down the road said, yeah, yeah, you know, the, you know, you can tell he was really trying the last few months to, to get things across, and, and, and we liked uh, the one sermon title stayed up for a couple of weeks, you know, he was as a husband to them. I'm like, eh, what's going on with that? You know? Sounds almost creepy. But for Loman Fish, Reverend Loman Fish, my follower who blessed me with his work and, and, the, and the 
legacy left behind. You know, of course, he was above reproach in his love and care for the church. But what do you have to a man in the late in his, in his working life trying to get something across that God's love is so amazing? God is captivated by you as a lover is captivated by the eyes of his beloved. But God is, is that worked up over you. His arms reach out to embrace you, and, and Jesus' arms are real arms. You know, the, the Jews talked about the Song of Songs, and they said, well, they're, they're they, they said, I love, I love some of the statements like, there are only ten songs. And the first is when Adam knew that his sin was forgiven, and the and the second Moses sang when they crossed the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was defeated. And the third was sang when the people saw water come from the rock before them in the desert. And the fourth was sang when Joshua saw the sun stand still in the sky. The fifth was sung by Deborah, by Deborah when she saw the, the, the armies of Sisera defeated before Israel. And the sixth was sung by Hannah when God gave her, gave her a son. Seventh was sung by David when his when his friend friend uh, Jonathan was killed. Oh, how the mighty are fallen! And the eighth was sung by David when God told him that he was going to establish his kingdom and his family. And I hope you're impressed that I remembered all eight of those. Oh, yeah. And they said the ninth one is this song, the song of the beloved who longs for the one who loves her who longs for that embrace, who knows that it's not here, but it's coming. It's the destination. And they said, the tenth song will be sung when all the redeemed gather around the throne of God. Pretty picture. We share in these songs to say that that desire that the one writing there knew, the desire kindled in my heart, is, is the desire I hope to share. It's, it's, it's the desire that will make me the person I have to be, the more it, it rests in my heart and is real. And knowing of God's great love for me, not only as a tutor, instructor, and teacher, not only as a father, a leader, and a king, but all that God desires me, his heart is warm toward me, uh, that will keep me safe some days. Let's pray together. In fact, we're going to pray and just, just lead into the prayers and the needs of the people. Just, so long we're just here today.